Today we are looking at the bones which contribute in forming my upper limb. So now let's look at the organization of these bones with the body. So I'm sure you can see this is a bone which goes horizontally and that is my clavicle. And then you can see it's articulating with this bone. This bone is called as the scapulae. And then you can see there is another bone which is joining with one part of the scapulae and that bone is called as the humerus and this bone is present in my arm and when I go down I reach to my elbow joint and there I can see at this place there are two bones. One is which is there laterally we call it radius bone and one which is present medially we call it ulna bone and then we can see this is going down and there we can see there is a bunch of these carpal bones and they are articulating proximally with these radius and distally with these metacarpals and which subsequently are articulating with the phalanges. So now let's look at it. First you can see this triangular shaped bone which usually articulates with back of our body and this bone is called scapulae. And then you can see there is another bone which lies in the front part that is the clavicle. And you can see this clavicle bone is articulating with this scapulae. And then you can see this bone which is my humerus bone and this bone is present where? It is present in my arm. Now there is a term pectoral girdle or shoulder girdle. So what, how this pectoral girdle or shoulder girdle has been formed? My pectoral girdle is primarily formed by the articulation of the scapula. Clavicle, they are together contribute in making my pectoral or shoulder girdle. Now, we know that this is the bone called humerus and this humerus bone is present in my arm region and you can see on top this humerus bone articulates it makes a joint with this scapula bone and we call this joint as the shoulder joint coming down you can see this humerus bone articulate with two bones these two bones are called radius and ul and these bones are present where in my forearm region and down these bones are articulating with this bunch of bones and these bones are called as the carpal bones and these carpal bones are articulating with these metacarpals which respectively articulate with the phalanges within each digit. So let's see these bones which we have just learned about. So we can see here this bone is my clavicle and there is my scapulae. This bone we call it as the humerus. This is my radius and this is my ulna. Look at it this radius they are articulating with these bones these are my carpal bones and they are articulating with these metacarpals and they are going to these phalanges. So let's take each bone one by one. Now you are looking at this bone. This bone is called clavicle or the collarbone. It is like the letter S. One end of this bone is quadrangular and the other end is flat. This is the medial end and this is the lateral end. This end articulates with the manubrium part of the sternum and this end, flat end articulates with the acromial process of my scapulae. Its superior surface is smooth an inferior surface of this clavicle bone is rough. Now you are looking at this bone which is like a triangle and this bone is called scapula. Scapulae has three angles. You can see there is an angle here, there is an angle here and there is an angle here. This is you are looking at its posterior surface. So there is a 
very prominent process and this is called spinous process of my scapulae. Because of the spine, this bone is divided. You can see an upper part and a, there's a lower part. So this is above the spine. So we can call it supra spinous fossa and this is the infraspinous fossa. Now let's see, this is the spinous process of the scapula. When it goes laterally, it expands out, it flats out. And this flattened out part of my spinous process of the scapula, we call it the acromion process. Looking at the same scapula, but from another angle, from the anterior side. And there you can see the three angles. And there is another bony projection. It's like beak of a crow. So it's called coracoid process. You're looking at the acromion process. And look at this angle is modified. And this is called as the glenoid fossa. This is humerus. And it is present in our arm. If you look at it, this is the upper end of the humerus and this is the lower end of the humerus. And in between is the shaft of the humerus. Now if you can focus at the upper end, there are certain distinct features which are visible here. Okay now, here we can see the head of the humerus bone. This end, you can see it's glazed. It articulates with the glenoid fossa which is present on my scapulae. After that, you are looking at the lesser tubercle and then this one is the greater tubercle. Now in between this lesser tubercle and the greater tubercle, you can see there is a groove. This groove is called as intertubular tubercular sulcus and this is a place through which the tendon of the biceps brachii, the long head of the bicep brachii passes through this. Now, here if you, if you pay attention, this area, which is a little bit rough, that is known as my, and it's a V-shaped thing, that is called my deltoid tuberosity, and this is the area where the distal attachment of the deltoid muscle is being placed. The worth mentioning point in the shaft of the humerus is, if you can see from the posterior aspect, this is the spiral groove or the radial groove. And this is the place where the radial nerve and the profunda brachii artery are closely related. Now, looking at the lower end of this humerus bone anteriorly, what we can see, the most lateral feature is the lateral epicondyle. And then you can see this rounded shiny structure that is nothing but the capitulum. And then you can see this pulley-like structure that is known as the trochlea. And if you go further medially, this is my medial epicondyle. Now, this is my coronoid fossa. And this one here is my radial fossa. You need to pay attention if you have to look at this radial fossa. But coronoid fossa is very nicely visible in the lower end of my humerus bone. Now, when we look at the lower end of the humerus posteriorly, we can see there is a big, very prominent depression which has been shown here. That is my olecranon fossa. And there you can see, this is my medial epicondyle. There you can see the trochlea. Now we are looking at these two bones and these bones are called radius and ulna bone. Now this radius and ulna bone, they are present where? In my forearm. And look at their upper ends and their lower ends. Now the question is how we can differentiate between the radius and the ulna. If we compare the head or the upper end of the radius from the ulna. So you can see that the upper end of my radius bone is rounded and look at the upper end of the ulna. It's notched. And if you go to the lower ends, you can see it's expanded 
and the lower end expanded of whom that is the radius and look at the lower end of the ulna bone that is rounded but these rounds are different from each other the lower end the lower rounded end of my ulna you can see that there is a prominent thing which is focused downwards that is known as the starlight process so we should be able to identify these bones on the basis of their appearance now what i'm showing you here this is my hand bones so all these bones contribute in making my hand look at this bunch of bones they are together and these bones are called the carpal bones and then you can see the first second third fourth and fifth metacarpals and then you can see the phalanges and they have been shown separately so you can identify each of them within this hand Let's see how these bones of my upper limb articulates with my skeleton. So we can see that and we should not forget that there is only one bony articulation of my whole upper limb with my trunk. And this bony articulation is just the place where this clavicle, which end of the clavicle, medial end of the clavicle, articulates manubrium part of the sternum. Otherwise, there is no other bony articulation. So we can see that the clavicle bone articulates with the sternum. And then this clavicle is articulating with the acromion process. And this head of the humerus is articulating with the scapula. Now you can see the location of my scapula bone with respect to my trunk. And you can see that. But remember, there is no bony articulation between my scapulae and my ribs. It's only attached with the help of muscles. And see how my humerus is been going towards this glenoid cavity of my scapula bone. And this is the head of my humerus.